I'm just outside Northampton at a new housing estate to talk to people who are looking at these houses, uh, at the show homes, to see if they want to buy them. But they're coming with solar panels, Give Energy hybrid inverters, and the option of Give Energy batteries. Now, what I've noticed with talking to the various people looking at these houses is that a lot don't know what a home battery is. And I think that's something that needs talking about more. I think because I live in battery geek world, I assume everybody knows what a home battery is and what it does, but clearly that's not the case. So my plan in this video is to tell you how you can benefit from a Give Energy home battery in terms of with solar panels, without solar panels, how it saves you money, how it makes things cleaner and greener. I just wish more house builders would actually put these things by default into new houses. The fact that it comes with heat pumps, Give Energy home battery, inverters, solar panels, it's a perfect start to any house. So this is a typical Give Energy battery setup. We have a 9.5 kilowatt hour battery, in fact there are two of them, and this is a hybrid inverter. You can get all in one systems and there are different sizes, but essentially how do I benefit from having a battery at home? There's a bit of a misconception going around which effectively says that you need solar panels for a battery to make sense, and it's not the case at all. A standalone battery can save you money and make your consumption greener. So let's start with scenario one. You have solar panels, how does it benefit you to have a battery as well? I think most people know that solar panels generate electricity, of course. So if it's generating enough, then that will power the house from the sun instead of paying for the electric from the grid. That's cleaner and, of course, cheaper. If they're generating a lot more than the house is using, then that gets exported to the grid. With a battery, you can use that excess solar energy to charge the battery up, obviously depending on how much generation you're actually getting. But let's say you've got a lot, it's summer. You can charge the battery up with free sun whilst the panels are powering the house. And then when the sun goes in again, so the evening, you start to get powered by this battery. So this takes over from the panels but it's still using the energy that came from those panels. So it's free energy, it's clean energy, and it carries on powering the house through the evening, through the night if you've got enough storage, until the sun comes out the next day, and then the cycle repeats. Granted, in the UK, that's only gonna be in the lighter months, and of course it depends on the size of your array, but essentially you can store that clean and essentially free energy. So that's a big benefit there. But what about as a standalone product? If you don't have the panels or you just can't get them, your house doesn't support them, how does this make sense? Well, it's all down to something called a time of day tariff. Think economy seven. I think most people will be familiar with that. Effectively, it's where you have a cheap nighttime period. It's not always at nighttime, but typically. And that would be your off peak, if you will. It's cheaper at off peak because well, not many people are using electric at night and there's still a lot of generation. So it's cleaner and it's cheaper. So the energy companies, because these tariffs are getting more and more common as time goes on, the energy companies can provide you with that cheap nighttime rate. During the day, it would be, let's say, I think 24, 25p. That's what the upcoming price cap will be. At night, you're looking at seven, eight, nine pence per kilowatt hour. So it's roughly one third of the cost to use electric at night than it is during the day. So if you have a battery at night, you charge the battery up from the grid, which is cleaner in energy and much cheaper. And then once the peak rate kicks in, the other, in my case, 18 hours, the battery then takes over. That then starts to power the house. So again, depending on your usage and how much storage you've got, the battery powers the house through the expensive period, charges back up again at the cheap period, and the cycle repeats. So you're looking at roughly one third of the cost on a typical easily obtainable time of day tariff. And again, then there are more and more coming out. So let's go on that kind of basis, two thirds savings. That's every day of the year. This is why a battery can probably benefit you more than solar panels alone. So if you're thinking, well, I can get a battery or solar panels, which should I go for first? If you've got a time of day tariff, which is utterly key to this, of course, then the battery is probably going to save you more money because, again, that's every day of the year, all year round, whereas solar is very seasonal. Of course, if you do have solar panels, you can still do the time of day tariff thing as well. That's how I operate. So in my case, 
in winter when North Yorkshire sun barely exists, I charge it at night. So my electric is either coming for free from the light bulb in the sky or from the cheaper, cleaner nighttime grid. That's the holy grail to have the tariff and the solar panels, but with either of them, a battery is, it's the key, it's the core to the system. It's the linchpin to it all because you can store stuff when it's cheap. It's almost like, uh, well, imagine a petrol station selling petrol at one third of the cost at three in the morning. I imagine a lot of people would get up, fill that car up and then drive around using that cheaper petrol and then fill it up at night again. Only with the battery, you don't have to get up. It does it all for you. Once this is set, told when to charge, that's it, it looks after itself. So effectively, that's how a battery can benefit you in your house, whether you have panels or not, it makes a lot of sense, both environmentally, including its manufacturing, and of course, financially, which I think is probably the main thing that people concentrate on. When you have cheap fuel sources, it opens up different avenues. You can divert it into an electric vehicle, you can divert it into your heating system or hot water. And with Give Energy's app, you can see what the house is using, you can see what the solar panels are generating, if you've got them, you can see what the battery is doing. You can have Give Energy smart plugs so you can see what individual items in your house are consuming. And there's an electric vehicle charger as well, all in one ecosystem. So that's the benefit, I think, of Give Energy. It's not just the 12 year warranty, which is industry leading. It's not just the rock solid hardware, the UK support, all the UK design, the UK ownership. It's, well, one ecosystem. You don't have to use three or four different apps to figure out what's going on. Hopefully that has explained if you're looking at a new house that comes with this sort of stuff or just an existing property that you have that you want to add systems like this to you can see which might be best for you. But ultimately you do have to do your own research because everyone's got a, a different situation, different usage patterns, different consumption. So by all means, ask any questions you want in the comment section. If it's anything urgent, support related, then obviously contact support and give energy direct. There are other videos in the channel which explain how to use these, how to use the app, all, all the how-to guides and tips and tricks if you will so please do subscribe to this channel because it's not just telling you about new products it's not just an advertising vehicle it's to explain how to use something better why certain things happen and it's, it's an information channel effectively so once more thank you ever so much for watching and i'll see you soon